Hey guys, it's Professor Aaron. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to bring in images as image planes into Maya, how to do some basic animation, and then take that animation and render it out to an image sequence so we can create a final video file. I know a lot of students don't feel super confident animating. We weren't able to cover it a whole lot in 101. So I, I know there isn't really any muscle memory there. And I want to go through some of the simple steps that it takes to go from bringing in an image as an image plane, setting it up, setting some basic animations, and then exporting that animation. I have a simple scene set up to kind of mimic the project that we're working on. Listen, I know these are all found assets, don't at me. Everything I do, I do it for you. But I wanted to set something up that was vaguely similar to the project that we're working on right now, even though it's a much simpler example. So I have a simple terrain here. I have this cute little submarine, and then I have a monkey head treasure. And what I want to do is I want to add my monster in the background as an image plane. So what I'm going to do is pop into my general perspective. And the first thing I'm going to do is just simply create a plane. And I'll scale it up and I'll move it over where I can see it. And so all I'm going to do is right click, assign a new material, I'll create a standard surface, and I'll call it monster. Now all I'm going to do is I'm, I've gone, I've downloaded a ping file from the internet. It has a transparency uh, alpha channel. And I'm just going to bring that in. I'm going to apply it to my color. And so now I have my monster <laughs> applied to my plane. Uh, we're rotated, so I'm just going to take a second and I'm going to fix this. I'm just going to go into the viewport, do some adjustments. I'm going to scale this so it looks a little more like how I would expect it. And because of my composition, I actually think I'm going to flip this. So I'm going to go into my channel box here, go into my X, and I'm just going to flip the scale. Beautiful. OK, so you'll see this was really, really simple because Maya is doing a bunch of kind of behind the scenes things that you don't have to do. If I click on my object, I'm going to open my hypershade and I'm going to show you exactly what's happening because you can certainly set this up by hand if you needed to. I'm going to graph my material here, my monster material. And what you'll see is that Maya has taken my monster.ping and it's piped the out color into the base color, which is what I asked it to do. But then it also looked at it and said, oh, we have an alpha channel. You're probably going to want me to put that in the opacity. And so it just went ahead and did it. So right out of the gate, we're pretty much ready to go. The only thing I may change, and it's a personal preference thing, I'm just going to grab my material. I'm going to go to my specular. I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't want any specular on this plane at all. So I'm going to pull my weight down. And that's all I need to do. Now I have a plane in 3D space that I can manipulate and move and animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my monster back. And what I'm thinking is... I look through my camera, I want to animate it. So maybe he's kind of like coming up over the mountain or this kind of hill in the background. So I'm just going to scale him up, adjust him, and then we're going to animate him so he's coming up. And so now that I'm pretty happy with that placement, maybe something like that. I'm looking at things like my tangents and my framing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my timeline because now I want to start thinking about animation. So 
right now, for whatever reason, Maya thinks that I only need a couple of frames here in my timeline. I need to make some quick adjustments. So I'm going to go from zero to two thirty nine. And in your case, you may want to go from 1 to 240. All I'm doing is I'm creating a timeline that is 240 frames long, which is 10 seconds of animation. 24 frames per second, 10 seconds is 240 frames. And I tend to start at zero because a lot of editing software starts at zero. But it's a personal preference. It can be a completely arbitrary number. So here, we'll start 1 to 240. Perfect. And so I want to animate a few things in my scene. I'm going to animate my camera moving forward in a simple dolly movement. I want to animate my submarine here. So maybe it's kind of floating closer to my treasure. And then I want to animate, of course, my monster coming up in the background. So the process for all three of these is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to pop into my quad view here. And if I select my camera, there we go. If I select my camera, I can see it in my viewport. And all I want to do is animate this. So it's kind of just moving in a little bit. I'm going to unlock it and that'll give me my controls back. And I will change my movement from global, which is the default for transform to object. And what that lets me do is that it realigns my widget here. So now when I move, I can move in relation to where my camera is facing. So I can do a really easy in and out movement with just a couple of keyframes. So I'm going to pull out and maybe I'll start back here. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm on my frame one. And then I'm going to go to my translate X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to select them, right click, and then key selected. What that does is it adds a keyframe to those specific attributes on frame one. You'll see I have my little tick mark here. If I move off of that, I still have red marks in my uh, channel box, but now they're just like a lighter pink color. What that means is that those attributes are animated, but you're not currently on a frame that has a key on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move to the end of my timeline, go to frame 240. And I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to push it in a little bit. Maybe bring it down. And again, I'm just watching the edges of my frame. This is getting a little tight for me. Maybe push in a little more just to break that up. Something maybe like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set another keyframe. So make sure that those are selected. Right click and choose key selected. You can certainly brute force this. There's a keyboard shortcut that lets you just set a keyframe on every single attribute. It's the S key. So if I were to, for example, grab my monkey head go to a frame and then hit the S key, you'll see it just creates one keyframe on every attribute. It's a bit of a ham fisted way to animate, but if you're doing simple stuff or you're just trying to lay your initial animation out, it's a perfectly fine way to do it. So now I have my camera animation. If I play through my timeline, making sure that my playback speed is real time and not play every frame, <laughs> I'll be able to see my camera move and it's very subtle. But I think that works great. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to leave it as is. And now I want to animate my submarine. So I'm going to grab my submarine and I have it grouped here. So I'm just going to tab up to the group 
and I wanted to do just just kind of a simple float toward the treasure kind of movement. So maybe I'm going to start with it out here. We'll go back to the first frame. And I'll set a keyframe on my translate again. And then I'm going to go to my end frame, take my translate tool, and then we'll just bring it in a little closer. Set a new keyframe. And that's it. It's a really simple process. And this is how you begin to build more complex animations as well. It's simply just layering keyframes and adjusting your timing and building it up piece by piece. It's not a super complicated process. Beautiful. The last thing I want to do is animate my monster. And so I'm going to take my image plane here and because it's in 3D space, I can animate it like any other object in my scene. So I'm going to go to frame one, I'm going to drag him down so I don't see him anymore. I'm going to set my keyframes on my translate. And then I'm not going to go all the way to the end. I kind of want him to come up and stop so we see him there in the background. So maybe six seconds, five seconds, maybe around frame 120. I'll grab him and I'll bring him up. And I'll set my keyframe. Maybe I do want to adjust that. I'm just going to go into my dope sheet here. I want to make a few just quick adjustments, try to retime this animation. Maybe I do want to grab it and bring it out a little bit. Maybe not all the way, but close. Okay, that works for me. And that's the animation process. It's very simple. We're looking to just do really basic animations. You can start to play around with giving it more of a floaty feel. I'm kind of speed running through this process. So keep in mind, as you're building your animations, this is supposed to be underwater. Maybe give your movement just a little more of like a floaty, uneven feel as it's moving. And that will definitely help add more believability to your scene. But for now, let's say I'm happy with this. I'll save my file. And the next step is to set up some basic lights and then render out my animation. To do that, I'm gonna take a minute I'm going to fast forward through this process and I'm just going to set up a couple lights to get the basics of my scene. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but I think it gets the idea across. So I'm gonna go ahead and run with this. What I wanna do now is set up Maya so it knows to render this as an animation. So let me get out of the Arnold render, save my file, and now, <laughs> before I do anything else, I wanna make sure that a couple things are happening. I, I guess one that, I had adjusted my SpongeBob animation here, so I wanna make sure that this is fixed, and I also want to make sure that my spotlight is following my submarine. So let me do that real quick.
my groups got a little goofy. I'm just going to leave it. I don't want to break the animation, but I'm very happy with this. So let's go ahead and let's render this out. I'm going to start by going to my render settings. I'm going to go to my common tab. The first thing I want to do is set my file output. So by default, my render is to an EXR file type and it only renders a single image. I'm going to change that. I don't want to do a deep dive into EXR files right now, but one file type that I'm sure you're all familiar with is a ping file. So I'm just going to use that. We're going to set it to ping. Int 8 is fine. That's an 8-bit ping image uh, for this purpose. I don't need really any more bit depth than that. The other thing I'm going to change is my frame slash animation extension. By default, it's set to name.extension, which is a single frame animation. If I were to go ahead and try to batch render or render the animation now, I could render all 240 frames and the only one it's going to actually save is the last one I render. So I need to change that. I need to tell Maya to also use the frame number on my image so it renders the whole animation. I'm going to drop down. And you can choose kind of any one of these as long as it has a number. I really like the name.number.extension. And what that'll do is that'll name the file name dot whatever the frame number is dot ping. And so for the file name prefix, by default, it's using the scene name. I will call it environment. And so you'll see, it gives me a preview. It says environment.0001.ping. And it's telling me it's only going to frame 10. So I have to fix that. I have to go to my frame range. I'll start on frame one, but I need to change this to render to frame 240. So I'm going to do that here. That all looks good. And that's all I need to do. You're going to want to change your image size to HD. I'm not going to do that. I want to save a bit on render time, so I'm actually going to just make this really low quality. I'm going to make this 640. No. We'll leave it at 960 by 540. That's okay. So I'm going to close this, and all I need to do now is render my animation. This can take a long time, so that's why we like to put the limit of 5 seconds, because even 5 seconds can take a while. It's 120 frames. So I'm just going to let Maya chew on this for a little bit uh, and have it spit out my image sequence, and then we'll take a look at that. So to do that, I need to change my menu up top. I'm going to go from my modeling menu to my rendering menu. And then if I go to my render menu here, I want to choose batch render. If I click that, you'll see Maya starts to render with Arnold in the background, and it'll give you the status of what it's doing down here in the right hand corner. While that's going, I want to go to my project and I'll show you what's happening behind the scenes. So if I go into my Maya project, I'm going to go to my images folder, and once Maya starts up and it begins to render, it's just going to drop the images right in this folder. So I'm going to let it go and you'll see it start to fill up as it renders. I forgot one really important step. I have to cancel this. I'm rendering from the wrong camera. We have to set that too. So let's go back to our render settings. Under common, under renderable cameras, change this from persp or whatever you have it set to, to whatever camera you're rendering from. I'm going to set it to my render camera, hit close, go back to render, and then batch render again. So Arnold's going to start thinking about it, and we'll see what it looks like now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this batch render. I've rendered 24 frames, so I have a second of animation. I'm not going to torture my poor laptop anymore. So I have my image sequence here of 24 frames, and I can bring this into a program like 
After Effects or Nuke or Premiere and stitch it together into a video. So let me do that really quickly to show you what that process is like. I have After Effects here and all I'm going to do is double click on my project window and I'm going to find my way into my images folder. And I'm going to grab the first image in my sequence. After Effects will recognize it as a ping sequence. And so I'm just going to bring that in. And you'll notice by default, After Effects thinks that this should be read at 30 frames per second. That's what this frame rate number here is for. And I animated at 24. So I'm just going to right click, go to interpret footage, choose the main option, and then change this assumed frame rate from 30 to 24. And what that will do is that will tell After Effects that this is the frame rate that I want to use. So now I can create a new composition by just grabbing my ping sequence, dragging it on top of this composition icon here, and it will create a brand new sequence for me, which I can play through like a video. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> It's too uh, slow to actually see anything, which is a shame. But if I were to let this run maybe overnight, uh, or at least for another hour or two, I'd probably be okay. I'd have all 10 seconds and I'd be good to go. So let's just pretend that we can see everything here. The, all I would have to do at this point is export a video file. You'll notice that in my render, I have this Arnold watermark. With Arnold, Autodesk lets you render single images no problem in Maya. It's not a big deal. The moment you want to start rendering animations, Autodesk says you need to cough up money for another license. And so you may end up, you know, when you're rendering at home, if you try to render this on a uh, on like your laptop or your desktop at home, you may end up with a watermark. It's a licensing thing, not a huge deal if that happens. Just bring your project to the lab computers, let it sit for a couple hours, and you should be good to go. So that's good. I'm happy with this, even with the watermark. All I'm going to do is go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q, and then After Effects is going to send this project to the Adobe Media Encoder, which is where I can tell it to render an MP4 file and uh, kind of wrap up the project. Okay, I'm just going to set some sane defaults. I'm going to use H.264. I'm not going to touch the preset here. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm sure eHub has a preference on what you should use. I'm not going to make any assumptions right now. But I'm going to change my output file. I'm just going to toss it onto my desktop. We'll call it environment.mp4. That is fine. And then I'm going to hit the play button. I'm going to let the media encoder chew on it for a minute. And it'll spit out my mp4 file. Beautiful. I can close out of these. You'll probably want to save your After Effects file in your project just to hold on to it. I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm just going to nuke it and I'll deal with it later. But if I go to my desktop, now I have a video file of my animation. And this is what you're going to want to include in your submission to my courses. This MP4 file, and of course, be sure to reference all of the other requirements in the PDF. That's the process, going from bringing in your image as an image plane to animating to rendering. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.